Hello and welcome to the 93rd episode of Fur, Fins, and Feathers. It's great to see everybody. We have an expanded audience that is extending across New England into many parts of the United States and even abroad. Today we have two special guests, Nathan Jester of Swansea and Kat Warren of Middleborough. Nice to meet you. Nice I am you. so happy to have you. We're talking today about the uh, South one Coast. of your passions. Yep. yep. Today we're going to be talking about um, keeping fish and uh, particularly uh, the South Coast Tropical Fish Society. That's a new, relatively new organization. Correct. You're right. Uh, South Coast Tropical Fish Society was founded in February of 2022. Uh, so we're only about nine months old. Um, a baby. We, yes, we are a baby. We are just being born at this time. Uh, we are like-minded individuals who like to gather together once a month. We meet at the Heron Center uh, for uh, Human Education on Plymouth Ave, right by Primacare, on the third Saturday of every month. Meetings are open to the public, uh, and they are free to the public, too. Anybody can come. Tropical fish is a growing hobby. It is. It's actually a multi-billion dollar industry. How can kids get involved? In fact, it's a family sport. Yeah, it's really good. Um, tropical fish keeping helps keep families uh, being close. They can learn about keeping the animals, uh, learn about different types of animals that live in the aquariums because it's not just fish anymore that live in the aquariums. There's snails, there's shrimp, as there's in this jar and in that jar, and there's all different kind of natural plants. Back in the day, we just had rocks and plastic plants. It's a lot different nowadays. There's a lot of studying. How did you a lot start? Of education. When I was younger, my uh, uncle brought me to a fair. I won a goldfish, and I came home, and I didn't have a proper setup. It probably came in something kind of like this, in a big goldfish. So my uncle decided to bring me to the store, and I had a fish since then. And that was so long ago, I can barely remember it. Um, so I've definitely been in fish keeping since I was five or six years old. So that makes 30 years. And you were hooked. I am definitely hooked. I have more fish tanks than I can count, and fish than I can count. And how did you start, Kat? Um, it was actually a suggestion from a friend. I was going through a difficult time, and she looked at me and she said, Kat, you need a hobby. She's like, why don't you go get a betta fish? So what started with a betta fish turned into a 10 gallon, turned into a 65 gallon, turned into a 125 gallon, and now I have an entire room dedicated to my hobbies. And it continues. Oh, yes, it does. It doesn't stop. And it's nice because it keeps evolving in different directions. And especially with an aquarium club, you get to meet other people that just want to see you succeed at the hobby. So it's nice to have that support. Could you tell us about this show that's coming up? Sure. Um, South Coast Tropical Fish Society is having an auction November 5th at the Whaler Inn and Suites, 500 Hathaway it, Road. This weekend. This weekend coming up. So get your, get your keys ready and your wallets ready. Uh, we have a <laughs> tropical fish auction. We have over 15 vendors, 18 tables, uh, multiple people that's going to be there with their goods, um, stores, local stores and stores from abroad. We are drawing crowds all the way from New York, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, far, far away. We're drawing people from everywhere. We have a big outcome um, expected. Uh, we have also the auction part. We're expecting over 500 items, so uh, bring a cushion because you're going to be sitting there for a while. Okay. That's good advice. Yeah. 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 But it is also a, a good venue for people could bring f to bring their family members to if if they are not they know nothing about fish. Yep. They can learn. It's a learning experience <clears throat> as well. Mhm. Mm it really is. Yeah. South Coast Tropical Fish Society is geared at families. Uh, we gain, uh, our main goals are geared to uh, inspire, educate, and support. We're here to inspire new uh, fish keepers into keeping fish. Uh, we're here to educate them, to let them know that it's, it's really not that hard. Once you kind of know what you're doing, it's really pretty easy. Uh, and then we're here to support them when they run into problems. 
coming to this auction, they'll be able to see some really great deals that they can help get started uh, in their fish tanks. Uh, they can come and ask questions and anything that they want to ask uh, from anything from salt water, fresh water, plants, dry goods, there'll be somebody there to answer your question. Yep. And to support them. Correct, yep. And help and educate. Yes, yep. That's our main goal is to educate the public because a lot of people think, um, you know, fish tanks are little bowls in the corner of the room that really don't get much attention, but we have learned over the years that just a little bit of time and maintenance can really make, uh, you know, even the smallest thing into something really great that everybody Every can enjoy. Every time I go to my doctor's office and he has a fish tank in, his, the, in the side of the room, people are amazed. Everybody congregates. Do you to that find that order. it has its own magnetism? Yes. Like even sitting yeah. here now, I'm listening, I'm engaging, but I'm like studying the little guppies in the corner at the same time. My eye just automatically yeah. drifts. It's like they have a magnet. When people go to my doctor's office, they are attracted to the aquarium setup and they could care less about what's going on in the office. That's probably a good All thing. Right. Yes. <laughs> Which it, it's mesmerizing. Yeah, and especially since the pandemic has come and hopefully coming to an end, it's great to get some good distractions. Um, you know, finances. Nathan, show us some of your items here. Yep. Well, today I brought a crown tail betta. This is a beautiful um, male fish that's a betta fish, also known as the Siamese fighting fish. They like to be kept alone. But he also has some snail friends in here and some live plants. The live plants help keep purifying the water and they also add oxygen to the water. The next little tank that I brought has some guppies that I bred. There's some fancy guppies. They're still kind of young and they're building their, uh, growing their, their fins. Uh, and there's a couple of fancy females. This jar that I have, a friend of mine, Lindsay, she specializes in this. This is called Opeyula. It's a uh, shrimp from Hawaii. They are captively bred now, but they're actually brine and brackish water. They like salt water. I don't do anything to this jar, and she's gonna have these available at the event too. I don't do anything to this jar. This sits on my table and I get to admire it. I put food in it once a month. I don't change the water or anything. Those jars are the coolest. Oh yeah, yep. And her, her um, setups that she has too, they're really affordable compared to everything else. And then this other setup that I have is just some uh, plants that I had from my various tanks. Um, on the top of it, you probably can't see on camera, but these little flowers uh, come from these floaters, these floating plants. Okay, little I'm flowers. watching them. And then uh, there's also some plants in there, and it's just an example of adding, you know, one little piece of rock and a little bit of plants can really make a statement in a tank. Agreed. Yeah, that took me last night about 15 minutes to put together. People don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to start, do they? Correct, no, they don't have to spend much. If they're creative, the more creative you are, you'll notice either the more or the less you'll spend. You can go out in nature and find rocks and various things to decorate your aquarium, or you can go to the aquarium store and spend your money there. So it all depends on how creative and resourceful you are. Correct. And I'm sure that there are many people that will be there on Saturday who are willing to share their expertise and their knowledge. Without a doubt. Yep, yep. The main part of the goals of our club, you know, is part of inspire, educate, and support. And we're there to teach you our tips and tricks on how we get things going. Little things that we do that we have found to make things successful. And it's not necessarily a shortcut because it's what the professionals do. Some people have huge tanks, don't they? They do. The cat said she has large tanks. Uh, where Actually, I am, I don't. I got rid of my 125 a while ago because I found that as my hobby progressed, I enjoyed keeping more um, nano tanks, which are like their own little ecosystems, versus a large monster fish tank. So I went in reverse. I went from small to big, back to small. And at this point, the tinier, the better. Yep. You are an accomplished artist. Thank I'd you. love you to show us some of your artwork. Be happy to. Now, some of your prints will be available at the show. Some of these prints will be available Saturday. Uh, Saturday. The majority of the prints will be available 
So I have one here, a blue Could Akara. You, uh, you want me to take it out? No, no, I would like you to explain what this is. This is, well, I start with a sketch. Um, and usually the sketch looks a little rough, and the more that I go over it with the watercolors and I layer on the color and the ink, the more the fish or animal that I'm choosing comes to life. Your artwork is exquisite. Thank you, I really appreciate that. You use watercolors? I use watercolors. Uh, sometimes I'll use a little bit of acrylic here and there, but it's mostly watercolor and ink. I really wanted to streamline the mediums that I used just so I didn't fall into the, and there's nothing wrong with mixed media, but in my mind, I feel like if I go down that road, it's game over for me. I'm gonna go all out, trying to stay disciplined and stay in my lane. Show us some other fish. Sure. This is a, this was actually inspired by another fellow YouTuber called Foo the Flower Horn. And did you ever watch yes, any of those? that's awesome. His yeah. videos were hypnotic and he would um, do things in a time lapse, which would show you all the plants growing in the aquarium and then he'd cut them down. But he had a star of his YouTube channel called Foo and he was a flower horn fish and that is my inspiration for this guy right here. So and I- And you have, in your hobby, you have followers and friends everywhere all over the world, aren't you? Don't yes. You, you really yep. do. Yes, we do. Um, Currently, the South Coast Tropical Fish Society has 35 members, and we have an online following of over 750, and it really is all and over the world. where were they world. from? The, uh, the online followers. The young line. Really all over the world. We have people uh, who follow us from um, pretty much all over the United States. A couple of people who are from Europe that are breeders that are interested in the club, uh, but primarily uh, everybody. We have people from California, Georgia, Texas, uh, New Mexico, Florida, who are all interested in the hobby. They all have some type of connection to the South Coast, and they're really happy that the hobby is taken off, and they're really great you with supporting us. I want to see more. <laughs> I wanted to. They're really excited to support the club and seeing us come off the ground. May we see a couple more? Of course, of course. I wanted to just touch on this wow. one. This is where it all began. Technically, it began with a beta, beta fish, but... Um, that's the one right there that really took the hobby off for me, especially the nano side of How the hobby. How long did it take you to create that? It takes about a day and a half. It all depends how detailed I get and how like, you kind of go in a trance, so you lose track of time. Mm -hmm. You become mesmerized. Yeah, you do. It's very, it's a hypnotic process. It's very enjoyable. It's good for um, stress and um, mental health, for sure. I think this hobby all around is good for mental health. Yes. It's a great way to de-stress and it's a good way to help get your mind somewhere else. It's a good way to escape somewhere. Plus when you create this perfect little world, this little ecosystem, and you start breeding, whether it's fish or shrimp, it gives you a sense of, I would say confidence, or like you accomplish something. Yeah, and then, pride. Yeah, exactly. it does, pride. it makes you feel good. So I have a couple more. Yes, that one's gotta be my favorite. The blue Akara. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a saying in the art world, if you can't make it big, make it blue. And I learned that from my sister, the glass blower. If you can't make it big, make it blue. Um, let's see. Why is information? I don't know where she got that from, but it, it makes sense to me. If you can't make it big, make it blue. Oh, and then I have one of my personal fa favorites. I'll take this one. Oh, no, I won't. She doesn't want to come out. Typical discus. Typical discus. Stubborn, <laughs> delicate, beautiful. And then one I have not owned yet, but hopefully will at some point, is a zebra pleco. Yes. They're the elusive. That is a neat looking fish. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. They're hard to come by, but there when may you be do, some. They're super yeah, expensive. There may be some at the swap, and they're, they're definitely going to be a hot commodity. Now, the vendors at the swap uh, come from all over. Yep, we have vendors coming from New York, uh, New Hampshire, Maine, I'm trying to think where else, Ch -ch Massachusetts, of course, um, Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, what else, what's around there? New Jersey, we have people coming from everywhere. Yep, and they have all different stuff. Some of them have dry goods, some of them have plants, some of them are bringing some really rare breeds of guppies, some really rare breeds of catfish, quarry catfish. 
We have uh, Celtic Koi who's coming with some really great koi and catfish. Chris's fishes with the, uh, the uh, guppies and the catfish, like I said earlier. Uh, Brain Tree Aqua, he's going to be coming with some really great live cultures, and it's great to feed your fish live food uh, because it's healthier for them. He'll have that there. Uh, I know Aquasthetics is going to be there. KJE Aquatics is going to be there. Uh, you're going to be there with us also after begging oh, you on my you hands and knees. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what kind of fish do you own? Uh, I really own everything from A to Z. Uh, I really do love bettas. I'm kind of called the betta boy in one of the groups. Okay. Um, I do have lots of guppies. I recently turned to discus, which is one of the fish that she showed. Um, and it's really a delicate fish. I've learned a lot of the hobby and I've really been able to tune in my skills with that one. Yeah, I recently set up a brand new tank for them and it's going to be ready for them. What do you own? I'll show you one in black and white. Yes. What discus. do I own right now? I focus on angels. I have a saltwater tank with a panther grouper fish named Mrs. Roper because it looks like she's wearing a caftan. And that's just more of an enjoyable, like there's no breeding involved with salt water. It's just something I like to sit there and watch. Um, I have a 40 gallon with the angels, some plecos, a lot of shrimp. I have four different shrimp tanks and doing my best to grow those colonies. Uh, what else do I have? Roseline shark, a little bit of everything. A little bit of here and there. I've recently become very committed to breeding my guppies though. Yes. Like it's a full production at the, this point. The guppies in this right here, the beautiful black and orange ones that I keep The tuxedo guppies. Yeah. They're, they're really they're sharp really looking. Sharp. Yeah. yeah, I need some of those. Will any of <laughs> the members be freshwater fish? Hmm? Do they, excuse me? Uh, a bad question for me to ask. I know nothing about fish. Are any of them, uh, people were going to come have freshwater tanks. Yep, um, f because of just the popularity of freshwater, it'll primarily be freshwater, but there will be some saltwater corals, uh, some saltwater fish so that will be available. So all of the fish that are, or the majority of them that are coming on Saturday are saltwater fish? Uh, freshwater fish. Freshwater fresh fish. Freshwater fish. Yep, majority will be freshwater, but there will be some saltwater. Okay. Yep, we do have people who do saltwater. Yeah. Yep. There's also a lot of dry goods for salt. Uh, if anybody needs salt for salt tanks, if they're looking to start, tanks in general, dry goods. Uh, when I talk about dry goods, I mean tanks in general, stands, everything's gonna be there. If you're looking to start from the ground up, this is the place to come. Uh, your wallet's gonna thank you at the end of the day. Toys for the fish? Yep, there's gonna be decorations for the decorations. fish. Decorations. Yep, uh, or as we call like aquascaping supplies, which will be like driftwood, rocks. I'm sure somebody will have, uh, you know, some of the typical stuff that you can find, uh, the molded decorations, uh, the really pretty stuff. There's a lot of, uh, there's gonna be plant cultures there. Um, there's botanicals, stuff that you put in the water to add some tannins that help keep the fish healthy. It's kind of like making tea in the water. The fish really like it. Um, th that'll be there too. Pretty much, like I said, everything from filters to fins, everything will be there. Oh, I like that, from filters to fins. The tannins in the water, that's for black water. Yep, black water right? tanks. Yep. You, A lot of fish you, like you, that. You brought some little... Uh, accessories here. What yeah. did you bring in the back here? Um, some stuff that I brought that's kind of essential when you're starting a fish tank. Uh, you know, test strips to make sure your water's going okay. There's, uh, there's tap water treatment that gets rid of chlorine. A lot of tap water has chlorine to make it safe for human consumption, but it's All toxic right. for fish. So you got to add these drops into your tap water to make sure it's safe. And then there's also other stuff that detoxifies the poisonous stuff like ammonia or nitrate in the tank. Um, I also brought some examples of food. There's uh, f some freshwater flakes, there's uh, flaked food, and then there's also pellet food, which is little pellets that the fish really like to eat. Um, I find it really easy to feed the pellet food. You know, I just throw a pinch of pellets in. Uh, it's high in protein and they go crazy for it. And these are all things that you can find at the swap too. Now as a dog judge, I always tell people that when they come to a dog show, and I judged one cat show, which was a wild experience, I always tell people to come with an open mind 
and plan to spend some time. Not to run in, take a quick run through and out the door. What advice are you going to be offering to people who want to <clears throat> learn about fish? Yeah. Fish one, keeping. One thing is to remember is when a fish is out of their normal habitat, they're going to be really stressed and not showing their true colors. So you're going to pick up a bag of something, you're going to see a plain, you know, not so beautiful fish in it. You really want to be able to research, bring your cell phones and be able to Google. You're going to see like a Gardeneri, um, killifish, you know, that's really beautiful. It's going to be muted. You're going to be, want to do that. The other thing too is, um, you know, just really have an open mind, go around and look. Don't rush into anything because uh, it's, it's the same thing with anything else. This is a lifetime commitment for the animal's lifetime. You're going to be taking care of it and you want to make sure you're doing uh, proper husbandry for the animals. It's not just a Christmas gift and get rid of it. No. Fast. Yeah, no. no not at all. These animals have souls, and you know, people say, "Oh, it's just a fish," but they have you know, personalities. Yeah. If it was just a fish, they wouldn't look at you know, look through the tank towards me, looking at me, and you know, you can tell that they 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 recognize you, you know, and they get excited when they see you, just like any other animal. That is true. When yeah. I walk into my office, my angels are lined up in the cor corner of the tank just waiting, waiting. You're going to drop something in the tank? You're going to feed us? What's going yeah. on? It's comical. It's cute. Yeah. Yep. And part of, you know, fish keeping is the education we teach you, you know. I, I, when I first started as a fish keeper, every time I saw that, I'd feed the fish and I learned that, oh, you're not supposed to feed the fish seven, eight times a day. Feed them one time a day as much as they can eat in two minutes. This is all part of the club and what our goals are and our mission is to, you know, help people succeed so they don't get discouraged. Do you have member, junior members? Yes, we have a lot of the younger kids coming in with their families. They're enjoying their times there. Um, one of the meeting spaces that we meet is autistic friendly. There's quiet spaces, so if somebody brings their child who is, um, you know, a little overwhelmed, they can go to a different portion of the, uh, the section that we're at, and it'll be a little bit quieter. The swap, not so much. It's going to be really busy and loud at the swap, but our monthly meetings at the Heron Educational Center in Fall River is really, uh, really great for sensory. Yeah. It's a very relaxing environment, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and it's really great when you can go and sit with somebody who is talking about something, the same thing that you're interested in. Not everybody's interested in fish like us. But more and more people are becoming interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question for you, Kat. Sure. I'm getting old. <laughs> That's terrible. Well, we're all. <laughs> I've been reading lately that fish are an enjoyable, fish keeping, enjoyable hobby for some seniors. I know at uh, one of the nursing homes in Fall River, they have a tank yeah. that's maintained by... There's actually a few nursing homes. Ner uh, by several Fall nursing homes. Yeah, Fall River and Jewish Home, yes. Sarah Brayton, they, they have you were fish nurse? tanks. Yes, yes, I was an RN for 11 years. I'm in school now for computers. But, but. you know... The, yeah. the benefits of how the fish can help the patients. Yeah, especially mental health. And you know, as we get older and our memory starts going, we get frustrated. It's good to have a distraction. And as we get older and we start having an empty nest, it's kind of great to have somebody relying, somebody or something relying on you that keeps you going. It really can be as low maintenance or as time consuming as you want it to be. You just saying mm -hmm. empty nest just kind of triggered something where if you did have an empty nest, for instance, if I had an empty nest, there would be a lot more aquariums to take up my time and my headspace for sure. How are you going to grow the club? Well, these events definitely help grow our yeah, viewership. Yeah, how many, now this, is this your first event? This is our first fall uh, auction and swap. Um, we've already had uh, the spring one and we have the summer one so there's three swaps a year uh, it's kind of difficult to do one in the winter um, it's difficult to get the fish out in the cold they don't really like it uh, and in the winter we kind of like to focus on maintaining our tanks and growing everything 
Uh, the three swaps a year it helps grows in viewership and everybody likes to come in and get a good deal. Um, over the winter stuff that we grow and over the summer stuff that we grow it's, we're also able to um, bring to the swap and share with everybody. Uh, and it's an opportunity for us to share our skills and, and, uh, and show our pride. Do you also have educational programs? Uh, we have monthly speak with our monthly meetings we have monthly speakers that come in and, and put on presentations so far we've done one on cycling a tank which is uh, basically starting a tank and fin and getting it going we've done an aquascaping demonstration done by aquasthetics of fall river a great shop on east main street if you haven't seen it yet go check it out it's a great european style aquascaping store uh, and we've had other uh types of uh, speakers that have come in and educated everybody on just different aspects and a lot of our speakers come from our, our group of members everybody specializes in something different so when we come together in a collaborative effort we're able to get things done together greater greater things gonna have, you'd be I, I'm getting excited because we're potential for new people to come as guests on my show. Oh yeah, I've been talking to them and they're excited. They'd, they'd like to come and talk about what they're interested in and share because like I said, not everybody likes to hear about it. But it's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. When I was in the Azores three weeks ago, I went on a whale watch and I was mesmerized by the size of the whales. Yes, they're big. Yep, they were they huge. huge, and we were in uh, we were in Tessera, and then they took us out to Saint Georges, which was a considerable distance. And uh, oh, I yeah. saw three huge whales, and I and then we saw dolphins, and I, and I'm saying, wow! I said, this is so fascinating. Yes. And people, people need to know about these things there's so much beauty here there is a lot of beauty and it's you know it, there's a lot of people don't really get to see uh, the different aspects of it when you're walking in a big commercial pet store and you're walking by the tanks they're not really set up for the comfort of the fish they're more just to house the fish until they get them home when you bring them home and you get to see them liven up in their home, it's really heartwarming to see them like, well, really I happy. I thank the two of you for coming and sharing your expertise and uh, bringing so much fun. This has been great. And we thank look you. forward to seeing you on Saturday at the... Yep, November 5th at November the Whalers 5th. Inn. Plug it again. Yep, where... Uh, the, the swaps at November 5th at the Whaler Inn in New Bedford at the Ryan Suite, uh, Inn and Suite. Um, Which is on Hathaway Road. Yeah, Hathaway Road. When, what are the hours for that are, the event will be open? Doors open at 10.30 and the doors close when the auction opens. We're open somewhere between 3 and 6 p.m. And it'll be a long <laughs> day for it's you. It's going to be a long day, yes. It's well, going to be an exciting day. And people will learn a great deal Yes, come. bring I your come. questions, bring your questions, bring your families, and bring your friends. So, you know, let's inspire everybody. I'm sure you will get some new members. Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And we'll see you soon on Fur, Fins, and Feathers.